Hi there. I've spent the last few days tinkering around with the parameters of the in running back to lay automation that I introduced the other day. I've been concentrating on the backing the single pick version of that uh, and I'm doing a full test run today and as you can see it's been going quite well so far. Um, I'm only greening up for a £10 profit to try and get some consistency going which uh, seems to be working quite well. The interesting thing is I haven't found a race winner yet which is uh, surprising uh, but still we're greening up successfully so I'm uh, going to be happy with that. So looking at this race at Catterick uh, you'll see that uh, it's found uh, Bolin Nell, Neil I should say not Nell, uh, as the uh, favourite. So that's the back bet just going in at 3.2 so we simply need to wait for the race to start and that to green up hopefully fairly early on. That's a good thing about uh, reducing your green up position uh, you'll tend to find that that happens earlier in the race more often than not. So as you can see from the watch list down the left hand side there's uh, I've been successful in six races for a total of £83. A few races haven't been qualifiers because they've had very short price favourites or the race volume has been very low. But so far it's going well. Tinkering with the parameters has increased the number of selections. When I did this the other day, um, it only found about 11 or 12 qualifying races out of a potential 40 odd on that day. So from that point of view, the, uh, the changes I've made have been, uh, have been successful. Okay, there was quite a delay uh, loading at Catterick, uh, so I've just jumped ahead as the race started and you can see that we've greened up almost immediately, so that's uh, another £10 to add to the pile. Let's go on to the next race. Well, as you can see, this race has a ridiculously short priced favourite, so this one isn't a pick, so we'll jump ahead to the next one at Billiston. Off to Ireland for a five furlong race. Uh, looking at this, escaping the jungle might be the pick, although Emerald Harmony is coming in, so it may screw things up as well and give us more than one selection. Soon find out. Ah, no picks at all. Okay, next race. This is going well. Back to Scotland and a five furlong race at Musselburgh now. And uh, let's see if we get any picks in this one. Oh, the obvious ones, perhaps the top two in the market. Uh, they look promising. Let's see if the automation finds those ones. Yeah, it's just gone with Arnhem. The, uh, the rise at the tail end of Ziggy Triton there has probably discounted that one. So there may well have been two picks. Let's see... That's a limitation of the automation. By definition, when you set up the automation uh, and the conditions for the automation, you're specifying a variety of parameters for that automation in that condition. And consequently, you will have races where there's a runner that's just outside the parameters that you've set and consequently doesn't become a pick. Whereas if you were doing things manually, you may well jump on that runner. Um, so that can be a bit frustrating when you think there's a horse there and you're, you're watching the race or watching the market I should say but the automation doesn't flag it up. So that's what I've been trying to do over the past few days is tinker with the settings to see if I first of all can increase the rate of selections rather than sitting around all day and only getting a handful of qualifying races. So things seem to have been picked up uh, today which is good. Um, 
we'll see how things pan out as far as the results are concerned. Okay, jumping ahead into the race, um, you can see that uh, Arnhem had drifted quite quickly after the start, so we need to, to recover somewhat. And you can see Ziggy Triton has come in really, really quite well, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Not looking promising at the moment with the, uh, the favourite though. Come on. Right, and he's matched now. Thank you very much. Good. That was a, a bit of a squeaky bum moment on that one, but uh, we'll take it. On to the next. Back to Ireland again uh, for this race at Sligo. Uh, Corn Market or Ducos looks like the ones that may be obvious. And here we get uh, just the one Corn Market. So that's uh, asking for 7.4. Obviously we'll take SP if that's not taken before the off. Again, rather than sit and watch the numbers bounce up and down, we'll zip ahead. Well, it's not looking too great for corn market in the first quarter of the race. Um, a two mile, five furlong race though. So it's, uh, it's got a long way to go yet. So there's plenty of time for it to come back down in price. Okay, we'll just let this run and uh, I'll come back to it uh, as and when something happens. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't look like Cormac's going to do the business for us. He's been steadily drifting throughout the race. Hasn't shown any sign of coming in at all, which is a shame. Um, that's going to wipe out all the profit that I've already made. If uh, he doesn't get his finger out in the last furlong or so. What's uh, what seven four seven two? So he's going to have to come down to something like six in order to trade out, and it doesn't look like it. Okay, on to the next one. Just accept that loss and start again. Off to Catterick now. Six following race, and uh, let's hope we can get back into winning ways. We are approaching dinner time, of course, so I'm expecting a number of losing races. That's what normally happens at this time of the afternoon. OK, we've got two picks in this race, so this is a non-qualifier. Off to Kempton now. I wouldn't normally do something on the old weather, but uh, since this is just a test run, I'm just happy to proceed with that. Uh, so what we're looking at, probably the favourite to the looks of things. Yep. Yeah. So we're looking at 1.95. That's it taken. So we'll just jump ahead into the race. Okay, the favourite went off at a fairly low price, 1.97. Um, so I wouldn't expect this to trade out until we're quite well into the race. Assuming that it is going to trade out, of course. I'll leave this as the last race, I think, uh, simply because it's getting on for dinner time and I'm getting hungry. Uh, but I'll come back towards the tail end of the day and let you see the final results. So as I mentioned earlier, I've been cleaning up for a, a target profit of £10. Uh, the idea behind that was to try and get some consistency. It may well be that that's a little bit too low. Um, obviously, I let things run through to the end if they don't green up. And uh, winning £10, £20 per race might be, might 
be too low in terms of the amount of successful races you need to recover a loss. So that's something else I'll need to tinker with. Typically I would go for something like a £25 profit target on this, these types of races, but for testing purposes it was fine. Okay, we're very close to the green up point here. There we go, that's it being triggered, just needs to be taken now. Thank you. Okay, so I'll leave it there and uh, I'll let you see the results at the end of the day. Off to Kempton for the 5.30. I'm going to make this the last race of the day as far as this video is concerned anyway. Can't be bothered hanging around for the rest of the races at Kempton. Uh, looking at the graphs, Happy Banner looks like it's going to be the pick. Soon find out in a few seconds. As you can see from the watch. Seconds remaining. After that uh, losing race at Sligo, we've uh, recovered most of it. Okay, Happy Banner is indeed the selection. So let's see how we get on in this race. I think after today I'll, I'll do another test run. I'm quite happy with my settings based on today's results. I think what I, is now in play. But I think what I might do is uh, increase my target profit slightly, perhaps to £15, possibly 20 and do another test run, see how we get on. Some of you may or may not have seen the post I made the other day regarding using similar techniques for drifters and, and, and the arguments for doing so. Um, I've noticed in quite a few races where there has been a drifter pre-off, they've come in quite nicely. So that might be another angle that you want to look at. Look for drifters and back them. The idea being that having drifted, they may well have drifted into um, value bet territory. Right, we're not doing so well with Happy Banner. Come on, don't finish on a loser. That would be very disappointing. Well, that looks like we have. That's a, <laughs> that's a bummer, never mind. So we wind up with a 20 quid loss, 15 pound loss for the day. Okay, try again tomorrow. Cheers guys.